Welcome to the weather forecast for the week beginning Wednesday, June 1st. It is June now. Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth for Longmont Public Media. I'm back in different and quieter digs for recording. Also with my uh, little summer cut. I'm ready for summer. Tuesday, June 7th, we have our first quarter moon looking very beautiful in the evening sky. Taking a look at the sun, this is last week's solar face image at the time of recording. And here it is this week. You notice a sunspot over here is joined by a second one, and the other one kind of faded out. Kind of will be fun to watch maybe for a month uh, the sun rotate one time. Wow, this new story did come out there. It was a giant sunspot complex on the backside, so it'll be interesting to see that come around and maybe threaten us with some coronal mass ejections and some aurora activity. Looking at drought, well, things got better. We got rain, and since this came out, we got even more rain. So you can see some lessening in the drought out on the plains. More of that, please. Taking a look nationally, kind of clicking forward a little worse out here, a little less uh, bad on the edge of the Great Plains. Ah, we still just need a, a major change to the pattern to start bringing continual storms into the west. We need El Nino to kick in, which we talked about last time. Uh, a few more weeks for this. Let's watch this animation of actually just a progression of images until we get to the latest 97% normals for a statewide snowpack. So we recovered with those storms. We even got some of the higher elevations I heard maybe got 6 to 12 inches of snow. Tuesday into Wednesday, so we could, I know it's amazing, might cross that uh, line to a little bit above normal before we finally plunge into summer. Looking at the precipitation for Boulder County, uh, amazing amount of water, 0 0.8, 0 0.87, 0 0.9, a little west of town, more like two-thirds of an inch. Um, Boulder looks very similar, 0 0.75, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, right there. Uh, but inch, inch and a half down in Broomfield, inch and a half in Denver proper, more like four, 0.4 inches or so around Fort Collins and up in the mountains west of there. But all that water is fantastic. And it looks like we're going to kind of hold on to uh, more rain chances here. So here's what mostly yesterday's, Tuesday's, uh, the end of May storm looked like. It was pretty much north of the springs, kind of included the springs. And up, and some of this precipitation up here actually came from the previous storm. You can see the west definitely needs a uh, return to moisture. That's hard to do when we get these shallow cold fronts and upslope being the mechanism on this side of the mountains. Here's our animation for the chances of severe weather as we go into the first week of June. And you can see where we are. I neglected the dot there, but I'll put that back. Um, very high chances, relatively speaking, from North Texas to Kansas, and that's going to happen this week. You can see this whole nose back in here, because often we get lows, you get our warm front, and get stuff forming along up here. So, yep, we should be looking for more hail, especially in June. That's one of our specialties along I-25. There are Junes where we've had so much hail hit that they've had to bring the snow plows out to clear the interstate and side streets. And looking at for those actual forecasted chances of severe weather, we have some convection possible along I-25 on you know, Thursday, kind of up to Fort Collins. And then Friday, we have a marginal risk of severe weather right along I-25, up and down through the state. A little slight risk down here in New Mexico and Texas Panhandle. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on that, uh, especially over at Longmont Leader and Broomfield Leader, see if anything um, more comes from that severe weather chance. Usually the time of year, like I said, it's hail, but you never know. A tornado might be something you have to look out for, damaging winds. So going Wednesday into Thursday, we have the departing storm. We have a little dry spot north of Denver, and you know, there's a little moisture out here on the plains that could kick off some stuff. And then for Saturday, we have that Friday night, Saturday, we have that chance of severe. We'll see. Over the next 10 days, our normal high temperature goes from 77 to 81, the normal low from 48 to 51. We see a pretty warm period here for the weekend, cool at the beginning of next week, 
and you can see rain chances off and on it this the ensembles are seeing you know, much more moisture much more uh, possibility of especially wandering after the thunderstorms notable upper air and a forecast map events for the next week is by Saturday we have a ridge coming over the state actually Friday into Sunday um, giving us those really warm temperatures on Monday into Tuesday you have this trough approaching doesn't look like much it's, it's sort of a zonal flow with the jet stream going east to west across the nation but these little ripples are enough to kick off some activity <coughs> there's a bullseye of precipitation here and the you will see in the animation the that this kind of goes for about a day and a half okay so let's do that let's put it in motion here's the ridge coming thursday into friday the building over the west there's a hint of the next trough out here the ridge sitting over on sunday then the trough finally starts moving in flattening out the ridge pattern and monday into tuesday very slow moving old shallow uh, trough coming across the state to be replaced next Wednesday by another ridge moving in and by next week on the June 10th that's a pretty good ridge but this is northwest flow you can get thunderstorm complexes with little ripple ripples in the flow that come uh, moving down across Colorado Kansas Oklahoma um, northwest flow like that can cause uh, mesoscale convective complexes so big thunderstorm batches that can last for a day or two okay so here's our cold air departing with this current front we're going to friday noon get some thunderstorms popping up there that's what those blobs were warm temperatures for the weekend cold air is not far away on the northern plains and it actually on monday tuesday we get what's called a backdoor cold front kind of pushing in from the northeast and then the cold air kind of gets dammed up and the lower elevations on the plains. You can see the mountains, kind of the southwest mountains and western slopes get warm and stay kind of warm the next week. Okay, moisture, really not in monsoonal flow right now. We're still dealing with fronts, but I do want to point out that the entire western U.S. is getting a lot more uh, precipitatable water. So the atmosphere is uh, abnormally moist throughout the depth. And so, yeah, it's good news. Here's our <coughs> little front coming in Tuesday and then Wednesday. That pushes some of the moisture away uh, briefly, and then it starts to build right back up. So, yeah, more moisture on the ensemble, more moisture in the atmosphere with the uh, GFS. So that's pretty good right there. So let's take a look at the departing showers on Wednesday morning. Away they go high and dry until Friday. You can see thunderstorms form Thursday. Here's thunderstorms on Friday. Saturday, kind of dry stuff up here in the northeast corner. Dry through Monday and then the next system starts to bring some showers in. There's a low down here moving away. Showers lingering around. The low stays here. Another round of showers and thunderstorms for Tuesday and then that all kind of clears out. Going to Friday next week. Yeah, stuff south of us, but not, nothing big. So over the next five days, yeah, the fronts and the cooler air will stay on the east side of the Continental Divide. The precipitation is also expected pretty much there. If you bring in the next 10 days, that's some serious moisture out here in Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma border, and some good amounts not too far from I-25. There's three quarters of an inch over to Boulder, half an inch or so up along I-25 here. Keep it moist, that's all we really need to ask. For the next 10 days, snow is pretty pitiful and higher elevations, not worth really talking about. So we start cool on Wednesday, slowly warm up to 80s for a beautiful weekend, get out to the pools maybe, and then we start to cool down the beginning of next week with some more showers coming in with that system. Uh, next thing I wanna do is a little special segment here, taking a look at these outlooks keep putting up the next month outlook and then saying well the previous month really didn't turn out that way I want to take doing a little analysis of that um, so here's the June outlook that I had up last week you can see above normal chances of above normal temperatures uh, throughout much of the nation a little bit of blow up there in, in uh, Pacific Northwest one week later, they put out another forecast, and look how much that changes. They really suppress the above normal temperatures to the southern 
parts of the nation and brought a lot of below normal in. It's for the exact same period. So one week later, their opinion has changed quite a lot. And over the last uh, few months, it's pretty much always given us equal chances of dry or moisture than normal and equal chances of, of hot or cold or above normal temperatures. Let's take a look at what actually happened. So December through April 2021-2022, our actual temperatures uh, remain real close to normal. And if I narrow in just January and April, we were below normal in temperatures. And you probably felt that. You were chilly most of the time or always having to grab a light jacket. Uh, we definitely had warm periods. We pushed and broke 90 a couple times, but that was quickly replaced by cool air. Take a look at precipitation, same thing. Last week's forecast was pretty dry for us, not much precipitation nationwide. And then the forecast made for the 31st for the, all of June brings us equal chances of moist with above normal kind of hinting, uh, kind of stretching northwest to southeast across the nation and pretty small area below normal. What actually happened December through April was we were really close to normal. We were not abnormally dry. Texas was on the west coast. And then if you take a look at January to April, same thing. Texas wasn't that bad because it got some precipitation in the midwinter. And the west coast is about the only place that remains super uh, dry. So just kind of looking at the data versus the forecast, we will continue to take that uh, National Weather Service monthly for forecast with a grain of salt. So check out Longmont Leader and Broomfield Leader for frequent weather updates. And really, as, as severe weather moves in or uh, storm comes in, I'm on there putting the latest data up and I'm putting storm totals afterwards up. So please check those out. We also get some great local news and Colorado news in general. This has been the Weather Forecast. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth. Keep looking up.